Go to your project settings, color management, go to DaVinci Color Managed, uncheck this, go to DaVinci Wide Gamut, hit save. Go to your media and your media pool. You can even select them all, right click, input color space, S-Log3, and there you go. Why even shoot an S-Log3? What is DaVinci Wide Gamut and why is it the workflow you should consider? And what does color do in visual storytelling? So I came across this video on YouTube and I really liked the color grade of it. So I went digging through the comments and through his description to see if he had to explain it. Thankfully he did. And so I had to grab my camera and try and figure out how to do it myself. So I knew I needed to start with S-Log3 with my camera because he mentioned that he used uh, Phantom LUTs, which only convert S-Log3 to like an Ari Alexa look. And that makes sense because looking at the highlights at how soft they are and well retained, that's only achieved through S-Log3 footage because that's where you get the most dynamic range out of your camera. But for most people, S-Log3 is a pain. Uh, it's super flat, so it's hard to grade and it's hard to expose in camera for. However, in Resolve, they make it really easy to color grade S-Log3 footage. They correct it for you uh, with a few clicks. So it's really simple, let me just show you. Go down to your project settings, color management, change your color science to DaVinci RGB color managed. Uncheck this automatic. In the color processing mode, there's just a preset DaVinci wide gamut and you hit save. Now you look at your standard S-Log3 footage in your media pool, hit input color space, scroll down to the one that you shot it in. For me, it was S-Log3 S gamut 3. And there it is. And that's it. So going back to the original inspiration, Using the Phantom LUTs, it converts S-Log3 into a Rec. 709 space, which is kind of weird in this workflow of using DaVinci Wide Gamut, uh, because you have to do like this weird sandwich thing. Um, but weirdly enough, using the DaVinci Wide Gamut space and having Resolve, resolve it for you, uh, it looks oddly really close to the Phantom LUTs, which means the guy that made those LUTs, Joel, he did a really good job, um, but at the same time, you don't really need them. Actually, using the DaVinci Wide space would be better because it's a, it's a bigger space than S-Log3. Now, all in all, do check out Joel's LUTs. The, the Phantom LUTs are really great, and he has more than just the neutral LUT, which is a LUT that we've been talking about. He has filmic LUTs and four other cameras, and they're, they're the best LUTs that I've used for sure. Which brings us to why do we go through all this hassle and research just for color? Uh, and how does it fit into visual storytelling? Now, side note, if you're using a Sony camera, you should want to use the full dynamic range, which means using S-Log3. Now, there are better videos out there that go into more of a study as to how color is used by directors for their films, and I'll, I'll drop a couple of those links below. But the general concept is that color elicits an emotion, and that creates a tone, and that accompanies the idea that you're trying to convey. You shouldn't be any stranger that orange and teal has been one of the most popular color palettes we've seen as of late. It's because they're complementary, they're opposite, and orange is closest to the skin. So it makes sense to make the background of orange skin blue or teal. And those colors are more properly achieved using an accurate color science. Now with this in mind and always trying to better my craft, I will be consciously trying to practice the same idea for myself. Now to summarize and recap, shoot an S-Log3, work in a larger color space, translate your footage correctly, and just be conscious of color. Do you have a love-hate relationship with S-Log? Do you even shoot an S-Log? What do Canon or Nikon users do? I don't even know what their science is. Is it also called S-Log? I assumed the S was for Sony? No? 